here with nate fisher yeah what's What's up up? man welcome nate fisher from a closer look podcast which is excellent please check it out uh we're i'm gonna say that uh, i'm gonna ask you to say that again about 18 times during this episode (laughs) (laughs) Uh, are you sure you like it yeah do you you sure you sure i I, I just i don't know sometimes i get insecure yeah it's very funny because like normally i hate scripted podcasts especially scripted comedy podcasts they're like all awful i can't uh, I don't recall ever listening to one uh, in my entire life, mm. and and I don't. Sometimes I have a hard time listening to my own, but <laughs> I yeah, I, I just I couldn't couldn't stomach the thought of listening to one, mm-hmm. which I think has been. I think a lot of people agree with that, which is why we have so few listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to explain um, like what the show is? Yeah, yeah. So the podcast. Listen up. Uh, the podcast is, uh, a scripted fake documentary in the style of like serial or like, you know, what the other ones, I don't listen to them. Any NPR NPR style. Yeah. Any NPR NPR show. Yeah. 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 And, uh, it's a story and we do, we did eight episodes, all one story. If we do a second season, it'll be another individual story. The first season was, uh, a fictional world series from 1979 between two teams that don't exist. One team. Uh, from Nashville that's run by a Christian cult and one team from <laughs> lower Manhattan that's run by the Gambino crime family. <laughs> and we follow these people who are in the organization that are playing on the team that are like commentators in the game through all seven of the world series games as like the, the, the violence escalates between both of the organizations <laughs> and eventually some uh, demons start to appear and, and <laughs> wreak their havoc on the game. Uh, it goes into a, we, 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 we really try to like, we have a lot, it's very violent. There's mm-hmm. a lot of death. It's <laughs> so much death for a world series. <laughs> yeah. So far there's quite a lot of death. <laughs> Did you listen to the whole thing? Um, yeah, well, up until the next step or the final episode oh, right, comes yeah. out tomorrow, yeah, right? So the, when is this coming out? Uh, this will come out uh, Monday. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So by this point, the episode eight will be out. You can listen to all of it uh, in like one sitting because each episode's like 20 minutes long because we... Oh, beautiful. It's mm-hmm. exhausting to write it all down. For sure. It, doing yeah. like like a one hour podcast where you don't script it is the easiest thing on earth. Oh, it's so easy. Yeah. We're going to do it twice tonight. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> <laughs> and and trying to write 20 pages of a podcast is so tiring. Like mm-hmm. I, I felt like I had just worked in a coal mine for, for a, like 10 hours. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just like trying to come up with like, and then in the fourth inning, this happens and just over and over it's, it's fucking terrible mm-hmm. do you have to i still need to unfortunately i'll admit i st- i'm gonna listen to it when i get the home tonight <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i've had so many other podcasts to listen to mm-hmm. so and many I, other scripted baseball podcasts yeah, yeah. That we, <laughs> no, none of them scripted i'm gonna be popping my scripted podcast cherry with this mm-hmm. one but yeah. uh do you have to like so do you so i assume before things get wild with like the demons and the cult and the crime family have you also like how much real baseball shit are you getting in there uh so the 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 other annoying thing that is that will and i both have a an overlapping autism where it's like okay what's the score in this game and <laughs> not only that not only that is what's the score uh when are they going to their bullpen and who's going to be on the mound for what innings and also what we we had we went back and forth five at least six times on which stadium should they be playing this game in Based on American League or National League rules oh in the World Series. <laughs> so, like, is, so are de- is demons like coming out of the ground? Is that like an error in baseball? Like, yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. It's it, it's if you hit the ball like really bad, it, it'll go into the ground, and then a little a guy will come out, and the steam will rise from the earth. That's that's kind of how how it works. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but also it's like there's a lot of yeah. It, we we just kind of went like spoiling the eighth episode. We just kind of went like hog wild with it, and just like. Just we got really self indulgent. You start to write it, and you're like, "We're gonna write a really tight story, and we're gonna write a really concise fucking 
uh, thing with characters that are like have like internal logic and they have their own desires and things they care about. Right. And then by episode seven, it's like, all right. And so this guy floats out on the field and his eyes are black. And then the other character <laughs> and, and, and this is all being remarked upon by a mobster who only speaks in movie references that I know <laughs> and, and starts talking about them. Like he's like a 1970s film critic. Um, and there's like 25, like very unique. Characters. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's, that's the other thing that's like really exhausting about doing this is that um i was so we recorded at, at my friend's house and uh i was getting really upset with myself because i was like man i can't get the fucking impressions down and i just can't get the fucking voices right um and and she was like you should not be upset with yourself because will can't do any voices and he's fine with it right i i i voice like 40 characters in this thing Jesus um, Christ, <laughs> there, there's like five characters that i don't voice and that i voice every single other one so there's just a lot of times there's just three hours of me just sitting on the floor with the microphone trying to get the impression right and then just hitting myself in the leg because yeah. i don't i can't fucking get it yeah this is one of the most autistic pieces of art I've oh, ever consumed. It's so and bad. I love it. So yeah. So I was. So I assume you don't record it live. You're not doing like an Orson Welles like theater of the mind radio production. I, I guess you're like cutting and stopping. There and are some times where I like have to do like two characters in a room arguing, and I'll like like one guy will be like, and then I'll be like, no, 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 and like it's it's that, but it's also like I would go line by line. Here's another autistic part of it: is that mm. I had to I had to make like a. I had to make like a spreadsheet of uh, like Google Doc because there's so I had to send like the uh, the editor of the podcast so many audio files. And so I would just I would make a spreadsheet. And every time we did a take, I would write down the Zoom file extension, put that in the spreadsheet. I would put down the corresponding page number and I would put down my notes on that particular take for every single take. And then we did like 30 per episode. Holy shit. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is I mean, it's a truly impressive amount of work. And like, I've seen things like this where it's like, wow, this guy works so hard and this sucks. <laughs> yeah. This yeah, is yeah. fucking, this is dog shit. I and, was, I but was I was so like, <laughs> I was like, this is not, this is not good enough for how much work we're putting into it. I was like the whole time I was like, cause we, we spent, we wrote like, we had like 20 writing sessions and, it, and the, I think the final, the final, script for the eight episodes ended up being like 165 pages like we wrote like a fucking movie <laughs> and it's just like it's just like this is not good enough for much work we put into this i'm not going to enjoy doing this and then it was just like such a chore but, <laughs> but it yeah. is actually very good Thank you. i mean yeah, yeah. I, i'm gonna give again this is the second time i got about 10 more fishing for compliments <laughs> right. in, the, in the um but yeah no it was like uh I, we were writing it and we would do all this work right and we would put it out and um how much do you guys know about how to track how many listeners you have? How do you, uh, how do, you do it? On pot, well, it what hosting on service what, do you use? Yeah. Well, so we have SoundCloud and Spotify, and uh, the RSS links out from SoundCloud to like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Mm -hmm. So SoundCloud tells you your streams you have, right? So like did, it tells you every time somebody streams it. All right. But do you, are there downloads on SoundCloud? I was gonna say I, I I don't want I don't want the sound I was looking for the SoundCloud number to be lower than the actual number because the SoundCloud number is startlingly low. <laughs> well, so like for, from what I understand is like if you use any other if you're using a hosting service that's not SoundCloud, you see your downloads, but you don't see when people just stream it. But I think SoundCloud shows you the streams. I At least I download. like to think I I have no idea if it works that way. But I've always just operated on the under the assumption of like, oh well, people are streaming it. We don't see those. Right. Yeah, like, we, no, you, that's, see, you yeah. see Spotify yeah. streams. Mm -hmm. You see Spotify. Spotify streams are counted as downloads. But uh, okay, you know if they're just if they're like not downloading it on Apple Podcasts or not downloading it on the player, then you don't see it. I don't think. All right. Well, I I, I just I need to find. I'm I'm like the I'm like the 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 bush administration like in the 2000 election i'm just trying to find more ballots like <laughs> <laughs> or they, no, well, everybody right now stop. yeah yeah go listen yeah, after yeah, this yeah. is over go listen mm -hmm. to a closer look on soundcloud i'm but, like trump where it's like 1 a.m and suddenly some other podcast gets all these votes flooded in yeah, i'm like yeah, yeah. where did these come from we yeah, gotta, yeah. <laughs> you're calling georgia kill the mailman yeah, yeah. that's right <laughs> the sad the saddest thing that i did when i was when i was like trying to see how many listeners we got was i um i, I counted up all uh all the li all the plays that we've got uh and i tried to roughly approximate how many listeners that meant we had and then i or i i did like a, a total listens right mm -hmm. right even if someone just listens to one episode or whatever i added all that up and then i divided that into 
uh, how much money we've spent on the production of the podcast <laughs> <laughs> to try and determine how much each listener cost. <laughs> and the number was, it was about $2 a listener. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> this is fucked up. Hey, no, it's yeah. really bad. <laughs> this is also this is a terrible way to promote it to go on the show and be like, mathematically, this is this is how much my show sucks. This is I just like if 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 we get I'm gonna just assume mm -hmm. seventy five people from your listener base come over to mine and they listen to half the episodes. It goes down to a dollar a person. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd feel a lot better about that. <laughs> it was a dollar. Yeah. I yeah. think, well, that could very well happen. Yeah. I do want to just say that we're joking around, but it is very good. And I asked you to come on because I could tell looking at your Twitter that no one was listening Dude, to it. Dude, so bad. <laughs> and I was like, damn, this is really good. And I can tell no one listens to this Will, shit. Will has, my co host has 9,000 followers on Twitter. Yeah. He Will's goes, a good account. He yeah. goes viral. Yeah. Constantly, yeah, yeah. And he'll post the podcast link after every time. Six likes, yeah, every single. Well, time. Twitter followers don't aren't real. They don't yeah, follow you yeah. to anything else. Uh, it, pretty much it, any platform that you get big on, it's hard to translate that success into another medium or another. Like they like you for the specific thing you do. Like that's mm -hmm. why TikTokers they try to like put TikTok TikTokers on TV and nobody gives a shit. Yeah, yeah. they just want to watch them do the TikTok thing. Um, yeah, man, it's cra it's crazy how little a big following will translate into like a an actual creative endeavor. No, dude, I I I thought about like how could I ever possibly get my money back for doing this? Like I was just like brainstorming like <laughs> what are ways. <laughs> so you thought this was gonna be a big hit? No, I didn't. I, 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 honestly, I, I I had a if you build it they will come mentality. <laughs> I, I, I did. Some of us some of us looked at fuel the dreams and said that could happen. I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could, it, you know what? Sometimes the cream rises to the top. Mm -hmm. You know what? <laughs> yeah, it hasn't happened yet, but the, the expression exists for a reason. This does. Mm -hmm. This feels like one of those like obsessive projects that they like show in like the they'll show in the Visionary Arts Museum like thirty years from now. Like you know, like you ever been there in Baltimore, Brandon? It's it's no. like a dude. It's like he like he like constructed like a life size statue of Martin Luther King out of toothpicks, and you're like, what's he doing now? They're like, he's in jail for killing his family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This feels like one of those like like one of those like beautiful mind obsession things that people will appreciate long after you're dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I drove, I was driving through the desert, like and I saw like a like a house that had been made out of like bottle caps and right. shit, and everyone was taking pictures of it. And it was like, yeah, and the, and the guy was Timothy McVeigh. That was the guy <laughs> yeah. who, made, who made this bottle cap house in the well, desert. I think you're onto something. What we need to do is we need to get you a sign on the highway. Mm. Oh yeah, dude. Not advertising the podcast, just giving them like next right, and then they come, and you're there, and you take out one of your earbuds, you give it to them. Yeah, and yeah, listen. yeah, yeah, yeah. You listen to it with them. I can. I I'll wait. I'll I'll go. I'll I'll do a partnership with uh with a car wash, and <laughs> when someone gets into the car wash, I have a narrow window of opportunity, and I'm, I'm gonna get soaked, but. I'll I'll try to get in I'll get in the car right as they're getting into the wash part mm -hmm. and as the thing's going over I was like play this and I sh shove a CD into their CD thing <laughs> you shatter a CD <laughs> against, <laughs> against their Tesla screen <laughs> <laughs> and then I just start playing it off my phone and then they can't kick me out because what are they going to do throw me out into the right. into the big uh, tubes they can't even open the doors exactly yeah. you're not allowed. Yeah, you're not allowed. And like what? It's like it's, it's if you could you can throw me out, fine. But you're gonna get covered in soap, right? And it's gonna it, hurt your it, eyes. Are you want to do that, or you want to hear two minutes of this podcast? That's your, that's your choice. Yeah. yeah, I think that'll work. I think we need. Uh, I just need ways. <laughs> Ways to <laughs> trap people into listening to this. I feel I, like at two minutes they're gonna be like, "Okay, so what? It's like a baseball game. Like, is it?" Like, well, no, you have to meet all the characters. You've only met two of the characters. There's 38 more characters you have to meet. We haven't even gotten to Nashville. We're still in Lower Manhattan. <laughs> Introducing the first team. There's so much exposition. You gotta understand that. Like, we we really then all the baseball games have a very meticulous score line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the, there's a there's a continuity of action. Nothing nothing is lost. I believe you, man. And mm -hmm. then by that point, we'll be out of the car wash and <laughs> I'm on, on to the next person. Mm -hmm. You know, you do it a hundred times, you probably get two listeners. You're gonna be pruny as shit by the end of the day. Yeah, dude. yeah, your, yeah. Your I'll get. Gonna be I'll get a. My, I gotta get like a waterproof phone case. I'm gonna get a concussion for sure from the big turp, <laughs> the, the swirling man, things. I 
Honestly, it would rule to go through the car wash without a car. How much do you think you'd have to pay? I've dreamed of that since I was a kid. I, I thought of, of constantly, I would like bike to it and I'd mm. be like, if they would just let me just bike through yeah. it once. Cause yeah. I mean, a car wash is basically a giant flashlight. Like the way it has all the different, like little, uh, it's gotta tech, feel so it has all the, the textures car. and the, the different like rotating things. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. a blowjob machine. If you're a car, mm. that's yeah, gotta be the best suck in your life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're, if you're just, Oh man, that's gotta yeah. feel so that's gotta feel like the best, like happy ending massage. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you're a car, what sexual experiences are you really able to enjoy? Yeah, the okay. occasional special needs man fucking your tailpipe. You got, you got. Sometimes a special needs man fucks the tailpipe. Sometimes you get to go through a tunnel. You mm-hmm. get to do that. Right. Yeah. Oh, how tight is the hyperloop, dude? You know the cars are licking their lips looking at that. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You get they well they well the hyperloop is all S and M because they like they strap you in to hyperloop like they, they have like a wheels connect you your car wheels to littler wheels. Like, oh, really? They make the car... That's how stupid the Hyperloop is. They make the car into a train while it's down there. Oh, yeah. because that's what's... That's gonna... my problem with Elon Musk is like everything he's invented is just buses and trains. Mm-hmm. Like, right. but shittier. Yeah, it's just like very bad. And then and then, the, and then the car blows up <laughs> when it's inside the Hyperloop and there's no way to get fire people inside this extremely, again, mm-hmm. tightest pussy you've ever been in. Oh, tunnel. yeah. Oh, if you're a well, car, that's my plan. Day one, I'm killing myself in the yeah, Hyperloop. Yeah. If you're I'll, a car and you crash in the Hyperloop, you're like, this is where I wanted to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, on the flip side, mm-hmm. it, he is giving us an opportunity to drive drunk. He's giving us a chance to get somewhere behind the wheel of a car, shit-faced. Yeah. And for that, you got to be like, yeah, he's kind of the man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I might, I might do that. I might do. You're going to go to the Hyperloop? It's in Vegas, right? It's, is it they made one? Did no, they, I don't no, think no, they no, made what's, it. No, what's the tunnel? He made a he made a fucking I don't know if it's the Hyperloop, but he made a tunnel and it's like it's really tacky. It's got these like gaudy like neon lights in it. Kylie Jenner went through it. It was on Twitter. It was it's some <laughs> it's a tunnel that only one fucking car can fit inside. It's insanely <laughs> Very sexy. I would love if he like kept doing the throwing the ball bearing at the window thing like over and over. Like yeah. eventually Elon Musk is just going to like build Rapture and be under the sea and be like and watch this and throw and, 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 right. the ball. Glass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of the glass tunnels. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like Jurassic Park or like <laughs> where it's like you it's like this will never break. And then he just does one and it's yeah. I mean, instantly floods and everybody dies. Yeah, instantly yeah. floods. Yeah, I, I want that. Man, I'm, I'm still thinking about that sexy tunnel. I, I, <laughs> I'm, telling you, I'm telling you, there's that a purple it's, lights. It's in Vegas. Have you not, have you guys not seen this video? No, no. I, I don't. Even, I don't watch porn anymore, so I can't. I'm no, gonna, I it's going to make yeah. me act up. <laughs> I mean, it's a really appealing tunnel. Except I don't like from what the, the the reason people were criticizing it is because the tunnel in Vegas. I think it's in Vegas. I might be fucking retarded, but it doesn't look like the car attaches to anything. So it is just like this insane fire slash accident hazard where yeah. it's like there's it's there's no oncoming traffic mm. there's just so one narrow- you just have to ram if a car gets stuck all the other cars have to take turns ramming it yeah you got to push it through yeah yeah I, I i i'm more used to like you know that blue collar like the boston tunnels of the big dig that's the kind of pussy that i'm like that i'm i'm into it's mm-hmm. just like, you know, the panels got built really shittily in the 90s right. with congressional money, and then one of them fell and killed a lady. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a metaphor for, for the women that I'm uh, right. in love with. It's, Mineshaft pussy. Caved in yeah, pussy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Ted you Williams, have to take a carry yeah. Ooh, that pussy caved tunnel. in. <laughs> Dude, just a Ted Williams tunnel. <laughs> that did actually happen. They, they, they did build the big dig, and one of the panels from the big dig fell down and killed a lady in the, in the traffic. Damn. And everyone was like, everyone was mad at the government for spending, <laughs> for taking 25 years. It was the most expensive public works Yeah, project. to just get smashed like Mario by and, one of those yeah. blocks. Because the glue, the glue was too weak. <laughs> <laughs> it was because the glue, They were using glue. They were gluing the panels yeah. to the, to the ceiling of the Ted Williams tunnel that takes you to the airport. And one of them just like unglued, just came unstuck. <laughs> Damn, and it, and it just squat. It swatted this lady. Just Squat. squatted her car. Yeah. Again, the most expensive public works project in American history was the Massachusetts Big Dig, and it took thirty years to build this and like twenty billion dollars. And this was like <laughs> like re, like recently after its opening, it just fucking. Well, so it, it well they they staggered the opening, but this was like ten years ago. Oh god, this was not that long ago, and like they started working on it in like the eighties. Oh my god! Dude. Yeah, yeah, it was like all like put to put the put the highways of Boston underground, and then they kind of did it, and then one of the panels fell. Oh, and the lady died. 
damn dude that makes me that makes me think about like the beverly hills like purple line like i'm not, we're not going to see that till like what 2040 or some shit yeah yeah they're, they're opening it station by station and i think the the like the last station that they're going to open in like the the va is like 2100 yeah <laughs> it's gonna awesome. it's gonna take even longer because they're gonna have to keep closing the stations to host the oscars that's it right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they host it. They they the awards are delivered by their big like boring machine. They come out. Yeah. <laughs> this big drill just hands the award. I would love to get killed with an Oscar. That would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Just like spinning like a billion times and just drills mm-hmm. into your head. It really should. Winning an Oscar should be like winning a Mayan soccer game, where it's like it's a great honor, and now it's time for you to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They should make the statues out of the people that they should be life size statues with no heads. Do, uh, dipped right. in gold, right, right, right. just a headless <laughs> six foot body, yeah. and you're like, yeah, that was uh, that was Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was so good in No Country for Old Men. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he'd been he'd been fighting his whole life to win that Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Meryl Streep keeps trying to do this. <laughs> keeps winning them. I don't know how. <laughs> I didn't watch the Oscars. No, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't no. either. I mean, I know that I didn't I, see any of the movies. I, I was unaware there were movies. Yeah, Sound, I, Sound of Metal was good, but it didn't win. Nothing that I liked won. Mm-hmm. You um, were you were a Ch- Chadwick Boseman guy? No, I'm not a Chadwick Boseman guy. Dad, fuck Chadwick. But you you heard about that though, right? Uh, the the ending that yeah, they yeah, yeah. they like rearrange it oh, so that he could yeah. win. So Anthony Hopkins, and then Anthony Hopkins, the oldest fucking. the oldest white man to ever win an Oscar, the oldest <laughs> man to ever win an Oscar, and mm-hmm. it was just a billion year old Anthony Hopkins was not there. He was uh, <laughs> didn't care. They wouldn't mm-hmm. let him zoom in either. He was like, I'll zoom in. They're like, no, we don't want to do that. It was. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear about that until like four days later, and I was like, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that does rule. <laughs> it's, it's a great. I mean, what a way to, for Hollywood to go out there. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, we're gonna see the death of the Oscars in our lifetime. Isn't that beautiful? It'll be in two years. Yeah, that's... I fucking hope so, dude. I mean, what we're already not doing the Golden Globes this year, which like I think I might even like the Golden Globes more than the Oscars. Yeah, they, well, they won't end. It'll just be a tweet from now on. Yeah, yeah. yeah by true. the way, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Fuck the Academy. Who cares? Oh, the no. Oscars are gone. Unless they bring by, I mean, I would be down if they brought back Billy Crystal and let him do Jazz Man. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's how you get people to watch the Oscars again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the the thing. Everyone's like, well, they don't want to host because everyone's afraid of getting canceled. No one wants to do it. It's like Billy Crystal is not afraid of getting canceled. No, <laughs> Just yeah. get somebody who's canceled. Get Mel Gibson. Get a, get any of the cool people left yeah. in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> Just get the band back. Get Chevy Chase. What's he up to? Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Chevy Chase hosts the Oscars via voicemail. Yeah. <laughs> Just get Alec Baldwin, nice and drunk. Just yeah. have call. Oh, dude. Yeah, all the yeah, it's, it's all. Honestly, all my, all the, my favorite people in Hollywood are just great at rip, letting it rip on a voicemail. Absolutely, <laughs> dude. The best actress nominees, five hugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all they are. <laughs> 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 Love Baldwin. What what a talented man. So good. Dude, how awesome are the Baldwins? I was just reading mm-hmm. about uh who's the Baldwin who's a drug addict? Because there's there's Alec, there's Steven, there's mm-hmm. William. Who's the fucking fourth Baldwin? I can't think of his name. Do you think it's like uh, you got Alec, right? I got Alec. <laughs> yeah, I got Alec. Okay. No, Did whoever it? whoever the cra- whoever the one whatever one's a drug addict, apparently there was some incident in New York where he was like he was running like cracked out of his mind through some big hotel in New York just screaming Baldwin. <laughs> just screaming his own last name. <laughs> That's pretty sick. Do you think that in um Glengarry Glenn Ross, like method acting, Alec Baldwin was thinking about his pig daughter during his speech? Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. What's my name? Fuck you. (laughs) Jane, fuck you. (laughs) Yeah, dude, the Baldwins are fucking awesome. Jack Lemmon's like, he keeps calling me Jane. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, I never never got that movie. So it's what? It's like midnight and they're still doing door-to-door sales. Yeah, I never yeah, understood yeah. that about Glenn Gary. Glenn yeah, Ross. yeah, it takes place. It takes place in like it, it, two in the morning. The whole movie takes place at two in the morning, and they're like above a bar, right, and then yeah. it's, there's the two le- the two locations that is like they 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 do the calls, and then they go down to the bar. It's also a Chinese food restaurant. Yeah, right, and Chinese. Food and you have to go bother people at their homes, right? Yes, who have that, told you not to stop by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jack Lemmon's like, please give me leads. It's two a.m. in the middle of a thunderstorm. I'm gonna go do some cold calls. <laughs> <I'm gonna> go. <laughs> 
<laughs> have you seen uh, Have you seen Miami Blues? No. No. Uh, Alec Baldwin plays a a complete sociopathic criminal murderer. Uh, I'm in. <laughs> very much just being himself. I mean, uh-huh. the man is electric. In like the <laughs> totally in the third, uh, I think it's like the second scene in the movie. He arrives in Miami uh, off a plane, and like a, I guess like a some kind of journalist or something is harassing him. I don't remember what the guy's job is, but he grabs him and he breaks his neck <laughs> in one move. He just junk, and then the whole plot of the movie is like him running for mur- from a murder. He, he he murdered a guy in the airport, and they're on his tail, almost like incidentally. But like, yeah, yeah. The guy like said like uh, like a, a snide comment to him. He murders him instantly. And walks out and goes and commits other crimes. Dude, that, dude, <laughs> that's that reminds so sad. me of that's like that Robert Redford movie, The Apostle, where like it's it's the same thing. Like in the second scene, he just get he gets drunk and beats somebody to death. I think he's like a, he's like a mega church pr- pastor who is who has a drinking problem. And then somebody says something off color to him, so he like kills him. And then it's just like on the run, and then like builds a church and like. And, and and becomes like a beloved pastor in the South. But then at the end of the movie, they're like, hey, didn't you kill that guy? He's like, yeah. <laughs> then he goes yeah. To jail. Yeah, pre like 1970, it's it's so sick that you could just do that. You just like kill a man in public and you're just like, well, I need to drive for a while to get away. Yeah, from get on the river. Yeah. Just get on the river, dude. <laughs> just go down Mexico. You know? <laughs> uh, no, that's like, that's what the magic of movies is, right? Everybody wants, that's what we look at movies and we want, I just want to do one kill and run. And that's what every movie that we like has a character that gets to get a kill in. Mm-hmm. Right. That's why The Godfather is the best movie of all time, because there's like nine of those guys. They, they just they go <laughs> and they do a kill, and they go to Italy, or they <laughs> they get like you know James Con gets gunned down yeah. later, but or they it, just say like it wasn't me. Yeah, right. yeah. everyone's like, well, I get, I guess I have to take you on your word. You wouldn't lie in court if you no. say so. Yeah, <laughs> may, yeah. May I remind you that you are under oath. All right, cool. Uh, good job. <laughs> Fuck, he's under oath, and he ah, ah damn. <laughs> yeah, oh, one of these under days, oath I'm is, gonna get one of them. Do they uh, like? I mean, in court now, like I, mean, I guess they have you swear on the Bible, which probably worked in like the fifties. Mm-hmm. But now they must know, like people will just lie. Yeah, they make you swear on different stuff than mean stuff to you. Like you can pick anything mm-hmm. if it means, but yeah, you can still lie. I, I yeah. went to court. Well, if they give you a choice, why would you pick something meaningful for you? No, I, I went to court and I had to. I had to. They knew. Well, they know a lot about. They do a lot of homework on you, like because like the prosecution they figure this out. And so like mm-hmm. when I went to court for my DUI, I had to swear in on a copy of Atlas Shrugged. And <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! And I was like, fuck! Now they got me. I have to tell the truth. I have to be objective about this whole thing. <laughs> You guys have Ayn Rand phases when you were sixteen. Or just me. Who's uh, Gold, I didn't dude? get. I didn't get further than like the Wikipedia article. I think I got it from the library and was just like, ah, that was like right when I was like stopping reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right when my brain was like calcifying with gaming. I yeah. have. They made us read Anthem in school. We like had Ayn Rand in the curriculum. That's awesome. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Maryland. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. Like, you're the guys with the best flag. We at, yeah, thank you. Like, yeah. Not enough. We don't get enough lip service for the flag, dude. I, I have Maryland flag socks. Really? I'm obsessed. I well, this is flag autism moment. I <laughs> I am genu- I genuinely very interested and invested in state flags. Okay. And and flags of the world. It was one of the first things I memorized as a kid. Was uh, was I had, was like three years old, and I had a book of all the flags of the world. And my my parents would point to was like, is this what flag is this? And I'd be like, this is Chile. And that was like the first thing I ever memorized of many things mm-hmm. that I would go on to memorize. Right, for sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was the first one. How has that, how's that served you? Uh, very well. I, I, I got to basically, um, I did a lightning round thing on a date. And I was just like, give me a flag. I'll tell you what I think about it. I'll oh, give you a shit. <laughs> oh, the, you're getting some pussy. Yeah, oh, yeah. You can name the flags? Rhode Island, solid flag. That's a good, that's a good, it's an anchor that says hope. It's oxymoronic. It's a great flag. Are there any flags you absolutely hate? Okay, well, all, all of the ones that like, well, I, Ohio flag is, is true trash. I don't even know if I know it. The Ohio flag looks like the flag of like um, Puerto Rico or whatever, or like, it looks like a an American flag that uh, w- you asked to be drawn by like like you had four make a wish kids <laughs> draw an american flag and then you put them on top of each other 
<laughs> and, and, you, and then you used all four of them at once. I'm going to pull up the yeah, Ohio I'll, flag. I have to see this. I can't mm-hmm. believe that's fine. I've been to Ohio. This oh, is the Ohio flag. That looks like shit. It's so <laughs> bad. Oh, my God. Why is there a oh, circle fuck. on it? A flag that's not even a rectangle. Fuck you. It's so bad. <laughs> putting putting two, a circle inside of itself on a flag is no good. Yeah, yeah. It's got, it's got a little Japan action. It's got, there's so many stars that just don't, mm-hmm. like, it, it's like they had to shoehorn in a lot of stars. And nothing about this works. And so uh, you actually, that you actually cut it out. It's not, Brandon, you yeah, oh yeah, because it's, that's the flag. It's like, got yeah, the, yeah, it bent. Yeah, it, 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 it goes in. It's a diagonal flag. It looks like a, what do you call that? A pendant from college or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it looks yeah, like yeah. shit. It's As a state, bad. you should really believe in yourself enough to use the, all the fabric. A proper flag. Yes, yeah. Most of the, most of the state flags are just like a blue they're a blue, it's a blue background, right? Mm-hmm. And then they have their state crest and it's every state crest is just like an, an eagle, just like pulling at the tendons of a Native American man's neck. Right. That's every <laughs> single, that's every single state flag. And I then, think PA is like horses or something. Something like that. And then, and then in the, and under that, so under this like horrible, gruesome scene, it just says in block letters, Missouri. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of them just have the name of the state on it, which is really funny. <laughs> it's yeah. like, what do we do? What do we design? Uh, just put the name. Yeah, just, put, just put the worst thing we've ever done, and then our name. Yeah, you're right. Because it's always like it's always either like there will be like a fucking Confederate guy, like it's like mm-hmm. a shield, and then like a Confederate guy, and then like a dude, like a Puritan, like one of the guys who like killed yeah, witches, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The, like that's always the state crest. Yeah, state flags swords. are basically like I saw this news story once that this like cholo guy got a murder he committed tattooed across his chest. <laughs> oh fuck yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it does really look like that. It yeah, looks yeah. like it looks like a prison tattoo of mm-hmm. like a, of a genocide. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that guy. He got uh, caught for that murder because he got arrested for something else shirtless. And they were like, <laughs> the, the guy booking him recognized him because <laughs> he had responded to the scene. <laughs> and it, and he's, at, he's at his trial and he's like, now, nah, do you plead guilty or not guilty? And he rolls up his sleeve. It just says yeah. guilty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The tattoo is so funny, too, because like I guess his his like gang nickname was like Chopper. Mm-hmm. So the tattoo is just of like an Apache helicopter lighting a guy up outside of a Seven Eleven. <laughs> what the fuck? That's what he did. Yeah, like he made he made him symbolic, but everything else was just the literal scene yeah. of where it happened. Holy shit! How do he pull that? That's an insane crime, dude. Yeah, <laughs> just shoot someone at Seven Eleven. Yeah, an, an Apache helicopter. Yeah, no, he, no. The he he drew himself as an Apache helicopter he, because oh, his true. name was Chop. So he drew himself like a Thomas the Tank Engine type of thing, where yeah. it was an Apache He's helicopter. <laughs> Guy's face, face on it. and his mouth was open and bullets were coming out of the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, then that, fuck. and then of course the rest of it was extremely visceral and there was a lot of blood and, and mm. guts on the pavement. <laughs> That's so awesome. It dude. would be funny if you got two artists to do it. Yeah. Where, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. The rest you get like some like tattoo convention like master <laughs> to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've, con- I've convened seven of the greatest tattoo artists and it's your you as a competition will each do a part of the murder scene <laughs> and the best tattooist the best the person who can do my face on the helicopter the best is the tattoo artist of Los Angeles of <laughs> East Los Angeles <laughs> I mean, think about how, much, how fucked up that must be to just like show up with like crime scene photographs and be like, you can trace this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is funny. To, I never even considered him. I mean, I guess it had to be like a, like another like like criminal mm-hmm. like tattooing him. But the idea of him just going into a shop on the boardwalk and being like, all right. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. So I got it. So I just did the I just did this, this thing. Right. Let's say I did it. Did didn't do it. I got it airbrushed on this shirt, right? At the thing on the next one, the the boardwalk (laughs) store over. I got them to airbrush this scene. Can you recreate this on my chest? So that I can take it off as sort of like a double effect. Mm-hmm. Dude, it'd be so funny if the dude getting shot looks like a caricature too. He's like on a skateboard with ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> this is just a, a large headed Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> And, he's, and, he's, and his shirt says, if you see the police, warn a brother. <laughs> I got my friend one of those shirts on a boardwalk like eight years ago. And I, I really want it back because I know he doesn't wear it. <laughs> hey, you know what else would be some great clothes to wear? I think I have an idea. Is uh, the clothing from our sponsor, Under 5'10". How tall are you, Nate? Oh, 5'10". Uh, five, no, I'm 5'9 and, and, and 7 eighths. Yeah. Well, then... 
Uh, let me tell you about our extremely on-brand sponsor for me, oh Under 510. God. So Under 510, they make clothing for men under 510. It's right in the name, where if you're under 510, you've probably been wearing clothes that don't fit your whole life. Yeah. You've been wearing shirts. Let me tell you, I button-up shirts are a nightmare for me because either, like, when I was skinny, they were all too long. Yeah. And now that I'm very fat, they're all too tight. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I've got so at certain weights I get fat enough that like it somehow makes the sleeve shorter because like right. I guess it has to yeah like get concave or something right yeah but you and you don't want to just like you don't want to just be bunching it up looking like mm-hmm. a looking like an old timey bar man right just yeah yeah slinging mugs of ale true you want a normal <laughs> shirt I want to wear a normal shirt right I also uh, when I was a younger man and in shape I would have to tuck in shirts always because mm-hmm. otherwise they would go down to like my knees. Yeah. So then you're the tuck-in guy. Just stuffing it yeah. way down in there. Yeah, you yeah. You feel like going into, you've got to put them into one pant leg. Mm, and you're yeah. wearing skinny jeans. You look you look pretty diped at that point. You just got a lot of extra fabric. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was skinny, yeah, because this was like 2011. Right? Yeah. So I was definitely wearing skinny jeans, tucked-in shirt. Just bunch, bunch, bunch. Yeah. Yeah. And then to try to distract from that, I threw on a vest. Now you're a vest guy. You're fucked. That's bad. Try to get pussy, bitch. No. <laughs> you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Never. But yeah, under 5'10", now I can buy under 5'10 clothes that fit my fat, horrible body perfectly. Right. And they, they almost make me look like a human being, that's that's a re- that's which a, is the highest praise. That's a real testament to yeah. the brand. I would love to look like a human being. This is the first time, so I always lie about my height, but I lie up. And now I'm going to finally admit that I'm 5'9 and 7 eighths inches mm-hmm. rather than saying I'm six feet tall. To women. <laughs> wow, you get a, you do that. You, you take the two inches. No, I, yeah. I go I go six two. I, I go I talk big game. Yeah. Oh, and and then the other thing, the great thing related to dating and lying to women about uh, under five ten clothing, is that they go by normal small, medium, large sizes. Where some lesser uh, and more expensive uh, small men's clothing brands, they go like they're like size one. Size two, right, right. size three, size four. It others you. You don't want to be other. Yeah, it others you. And then you find yourself in a situation that I've encountered multiple times mm-hmm. where I somehow managed to have sex and the girl like goes to wear my t-shirt afterwards because they like doing that. And she's like, why is your shirt size one? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. You don't want to be get caught wearing like training clothes, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, is this your girlfriend's shirt? <laughs> having, having a small, medium, large to scale is good because you don't want it to be like a, like a, like a Starbucks situation where it's like all the sizes are different synonyms of small. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. like small, pequeño, <laughs> puny <laughs> just a little small. yeah yeah no truly like uh like as a short man buying clothes sucks it's humiliating it's been horrible my whole life i used to go to the mall with my mom and i would like cry Dude, I, I, so I, you know, if i if i designed the, the small the small men's clothes size it'd be like cutie pie little man and mr <laughs> handsome those would be the three sizes uh, or, or just go reverse psychology just like the golem and then like <laughs> The Colossus. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now I can have my dignity back. Thanks, Under 510. Damn. See, I used to speak up during these. Now I'm just not my story to tell. I try to be an ally through these ads. <laughs> That's right. That's what I do, man. It's important to, to, to center yourself in uh, right spaces and decenter yourself in the spaces you know shouldn't be centered in. I say that all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I totally understand what I just said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, go to under510.com. You can sign up for their text alerts and get $10 off. Nice. Mm-hmm. Cool. You better do that, man. If I you d- come on here and you don't do that, I want to see the receipts. Or are going to have you back on? You're going to hold the receipts right up to the camera. Yeah, I'm going to have to. I want to buy one of those shirts. And I'm sure it's it's very affordable. Even on even if somebody... It is actually very affordable. If somebody hypothetically spent uh, $800... <laughs> On a podcast. I'm the sound guy. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, it's money money well spent though. I mean, you'll never you'll never make it back ever. But for, it it sounds great uh, for a podcast that if you add up the length of all the episodes is is pushing right around three hours total. Mm-hmm. So that's that's three episodes of a regular podcast, right? If I, someone had d- done that. They could still buy one of these shirts. Yeah, that's right. And <laughs> they really could. And to know that that person is out there just makes me feel warm to know that they're, they're taken care of. That's right. Yeah. Whoever they may be. I know a lot of 
schmucks <laughs> who have spent eight hundred dollars on a scripted podcast. I know a lot of guys who got conned by someone from the internet <laughs> into living out there. I don't even know if it's a dream at this point. It's just more of a just sort of thing that you just fixate on and, mm-hmm. and repeat to yourself lines from, and then got tricked into thinking they could make that a reality. Right. Uh-huh. And they do make it a reality, but they're it's not, just not they, one anyone wants to live in. They can't fly yeah, yeah. home and see their, their mother. <laughs> <laughs> and she really wants you to go to Memphis, but it's just like, you know, they don't fly to Memphis that often from LAX or wherever <laughs> this person lives. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just not a lot it's a long, it's a, uh, it's a big commitment and and you know I'd like to have a shirt for it. That's <laughs> that's the more. everybody loves to wear a shirt when they go to see their mother. Oh I, yeah. I mm-hmm. I often I wear I saw my mother today and I was wearing a shirt the whole time. Your mom here? Yeah, my mom came to visit me here. Oh, that's beautiful. What'd you do? Uh well, so far I've just picked her up from the airport and brought her to her hotel. Where where's the hotel? Uh, it is uh, down the street. That's so the, nice. so cute. Oh, is it the Hilton? Yeah. It, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's well, a, whatever. Yeah. Not gonna be able to, nobody knows where we are. <laughs> She'll be gone when this is up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's interested in going and finding your mom. <laughs> I certainly <laughs> hope that they are. I don't think so. I don't even think our listeners live in it's Los Angeles. It's room 322. <laughs> Not gonna. It's in room three twenty two. Not gonna say what hotel. Mm-hmm. But it's room three twenty two. I should have you right. I should have some skin in the game now. I'll tell everybody where Isaac's gonna live. I, got, <laughs> I can dox more information that could be potentially threatening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got you. Can you can? Find, I'll give people my address. Uh, just you want to send me any money? Any just? Uh, <laughs> no, just send me a nice word. Just a mm-hmm. just a word. I listen to the podcast on a piece of paper. <laughs> Uh, anything. I, yeah, I give yeah. my address out all the time. People, send you're, me you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to sell this. Um, what what you're gonna have to do is, uh, t- it's not a podcast anymore. Take it down. Yes. Now we're going back to like the '60s when there were like comedy albums of skits. Oh, that's really oh. good. Yeah, that's very. That's a really good idea. You'll be like Von Meter, or like or like Adam Sandler. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, Adam or Norm. Wasn't we're in like the first couple Norm CDs all skits, or he's just on the Adam CDs. I can't think. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I swear to God, there's there's a Norm McDonald CD that's not stand up. It's just him, like, man, eh, I mean, you know, all my friends came over to watch some th- something. It's like a well, I, well I, it's, it's a fictional World Series from 1979, <laughs> and get this, the teams are from they're from Nashville and they're from Lower Manhattan. Have you ever heard of that story? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just listening to it like fuck <laughs> god damn he thinks of everything mm-hmm. <laughs> what am I going to do with this script I wrote called dirty work <laughs> just found out about that too fuck god <laughs> um, no I should I should definitely do that I'm going to I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my 90 followers right mm-hmm. on the on the podcast Twitter account I'm going to DM them one by one <laughs> They love when you do that. And I'm going to go, listen, listen, Chachi, I'm sundown in this podcast. I'm putting, I'm bringing it off. The, um, it's going in the Disney vault. <laughs> <laughs> Ever want to hear it again? Yeah. If you show up at, at the Disney vault, will they open it to let you put things in there? Come on. You got a shelf. You got an extra shelf, right? <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. pop the CD up there. It's, mm-hmm. it's a one of one. No one's ever made a CD of this. Yeah, yeah. Right. Your podcast is like Stadia, where they're like, this is going to change everything. And then they just saw the numbers. They're like, oh, we're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> we're taking this offline. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm dialing up, going to the old offices of where Quibi used to be, <laughs> just being like, now there's no video, but... The, the timing of it is right. It works. It fits the format. Yeah. You just hand a flash drive to Jeffrey Katzenberg. You're like, can you delete yeah. this for me? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, here's an episode of my TV show. And it's just a, a, a still tripod shot of you with like an old reel to reel player and you hit play <laughs> and then your podcast plays. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just me. It's just me. Uh, it's just me sitting in like this, right? But instead of a table, there's just an enormous ghetto blaster, <laughs> and I just play it. I just, I just play the podcast and just go like this to the camera. Oh, dude, yeah, you should take the podcast yeah. like on the buses. You should take it on the buses on the red line. Yeah, yeah. has anyone yes. ever radio Rahimed their own podcast? <laughs> just <laughs> play their podcast so have the police kill them. I'm going yeah. pizza shop by pizza shop, and I'm not stopping until I get choked out. Yeah. I'm gonna get myself a nice tank top. I'm gonna walk around blasting cow now. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, we have you ever gotten caught listening to your own podcast? Uh, I used to do it more. Like now, I don't really. Um, mm-hmm. but I used to listen. I'd like listen to it the next day to. I guess I don't know what. Just like hear me go uh and um and like, and then just yeah. like crash my car in shame. I still do that. Yeah. yeah. I've I've gotten I've caught my I've been caught um muttering lines from my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, I've I've been caught uh a morning after, just being there going like. And that's the bottom of the eighth there in the holy cow state. <laughs> just doing like, I'm just d- literally just d- lines from the announcers and I'm just muttering the lines in the morning <laughs> while, I'm, while I'm lying next to a woman who cares about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's weird when you trick a woman into caring about you, isn't it? Yeah, I heard you did that. I, I have. That's so nice. I'm so happy for you. I've been tricking her for uh, like a year and a half It's now. one of the It's one of the most prolonged... Uh, instances of a trick i've ever seen yeah, in my life do you turn any tricks these days i am turning tricks that's so <laughs> nice for you yeah man you out on the stroll that's so good yeah dude mm-hmm. fuck <laughs> yeah one time i uh, i was getting my oil changed and when they told me to turn my car back on it connected to my phone and started playing coward hour <laughs> <laughs> now now all you have to do is keep your mouth shut so they don't know that's your voice yeah, yeah. yeah. Just do everything like a mime from there out <laughs> yeah, I, I just, <laughs> you turn and you turn it on, and it's just you going. I gotta get my fucking car taken in. I gotta go to this dipshit mechanic. He's gonna overcharge me. <laughs> and then he's like, "Sir," and I'm like, "Oi, mate, just listen to a bit of a podcast." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what is this? Uh, what is this, the, the podcast? Oh, no, no. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, he sees. I just he sees me frantically getting scotch tape out of the glove compartment <laughs> to tape my eyes back. <laughs> oh, I hit, I hit the look on the radio. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, very sorry. Well, no how, English, very bad. How would a stunner? <laughs> 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 He's just like oh, he was pretending to be Chinese and yeah. saying that his own podcast is. And then, and then, and then yeah. as you do that, the audio of your podcast is still playing. Goes into you doing the Chinese voice. <laughs> In the past yeah, episode, yeah. <laughs> which honestly the odds aren't bad. <laughs> oh my god! No, I never. I I have not. Uh, I've never played my podcast. I I can't bring myself to just listen to it because it's it's. I listen to it and I'm like that Woody Allen impression is just not there. It's just it's just eighty percent of the way there. Really? <laughs> the I'm impressions like, are all really good. Nah, th- okay, that's three. Uh, I need a couple more before I can get out of here. I will have to cram uh, them in. Yeah, <laughs> um, but no, it, it's it's just like it's just I I sit I have sat in my car and on purpose and sat there and listened to the episode and I've just been like fuck fuck fuck, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> like I hit myself in the leg like it's like. Mm-hmm. This is what you do for art. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta sacrifice so much to. <laughs> you gotta really put yourself through the ringer to get to get Burt Reynolds down. To, to, oh, to, Burt Reynolds is a tough one. Burt is tough. Burt's very subtle. Burt's very subtle, and you gotta like, you gotta watch a lot of old Dick Cavett interviews. I watched yes. so many goddamn Dick Cavett interviews for this fucking podcast. <laughs> Great show. <laughs> I have a lot of I have a lot of opinions about various talk shows of the 1960s and 70s now. I, I mean, Dick Cavett is like the talk show. Oh, it's, it's great. It's incredible. Have you seen the Cassavetes one? Yes, yeah. dude, with Peter oh. Falk and fucking Oh, yeah, Zara. he's played that for me. Oh, my, dude, it's, for, it's for 20 it, minutes. He can't get a hold of his own show. It's so good. There's, it's so good. There's never been anything like that since, now Imagine, Imagine if someone did that to, like, James Corden. They'd be, like, sniped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely, absolutely. But it really just shows you how much easier it was to succeed back in the day, where you could be a genuine, like, iconoclast, and you could actually make a statement by showing up to a taping of a thing completely shit-faced. And now... 10 million people do podcasts where that's what they do. Right. Because mm-hmm. they show up shit faced to them and they're just their own dick cavits, just drunk. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's it. And it's just harder now. Yeah. You can't be a, you can't be just a cool for being a drunk guy. Right. <laughs> you can't do that, which is. Yeah. But he used to be like, <laughs> yeah. You, oh, have you heard about, have you heard about this, uh, the singer? He's drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, does John Cassavetes is like, yeah, this guy's like the greatest artist. Like he's like, he invented indie film. It just turns out he was just the guy, the first guy to be drunk all the time. All the time. All mm-hmm. the time. And that's it. That's all I had to do yeah. back then. Yeah. I was drunk all the time and I had to stop because yeah. it's it's, it was the 2010s. That's such, that's such trash. Mm-hmm. They really did us dirty. Yeah. You didn't even, yeah, dude. 
Man, I you didn't even make a woman under the influence or whatever. Uh, do, oh, you didn't make opening night. Oh. You didn't make any of the greats. I dude. didn't direct any films. And it's like, those are amazing because like John Cassavetti was, was so drunk, he didn't write them or edit them. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah, just, yeah. He was just putting out like three hour improvised movies yeah. and people were like, these are incredible. He <laughs> <laughs> just is like, camera rolling and magic. <laughs> <laughs> dude, pretty much. Yeah, he's, like, <laughs> and now get the rack focus, blurry in focus, blurry in focus, <laughs> blurry and that's the shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love John Cassavetti's movies, but like when I think about like the cinematography, I'm like, it's not incredible. Like he just kind of sets the camera up and like lets people go. Right place, right time. That's all you got to do. That's, That's right. That's all dude. you got to do. You don't have to do cool shots. You know, be fucking like this podcast. I hope that's the right place. That's a Cassavetti style angle. It is. You can see it's not totally even. That's right. It's yeah. not centered. It's got very indie sort of. Yeah. Uh, I tried to center it the first week or two, but it is. It doesn't matter. It's difficult to do that. It's called having your own voice. Mm -hmm. So do you put this up on YouTube? Yeah. I love that. I love the idea of watching that as a video. Just, just <laughs> do you? Intently <laughs> looking at a fixed image for an hour. Dude, you'd be fucking surprised. I mean, I, I kind of think I have the same feeling about it as you, but no, apparently people love it. I love that. No, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I personally, I've watched a, many very boring uh art house pretentious movies that are basically that. So I don't really have a leg to stand on. Right. But... It is, it is, I do like the idea of just like, just having humans like on a screen next to you so you can just like pretend you're at a bar and just like <laughs> two guys next to you. Just that is, yeah, that is pretty much what a podcast is. That's it. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Especially, you know, me, cause you know, I'm, I'm, I'm secretly drinking alone. No one knows I've relapsed yet. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one more sprite, please. I'm listening you to no one. <laughs> what will be the funniest podcast for me to relapse. I'm just listening to like you talking you two to me. Yeah. <laughs> <or something. laughs> oh, how did this get made? Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> We're learning how these things got made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> peculiar. <laughs> what a peculiar film. <laughs> As you're completely yeah, I'm just uh, <laughs> drunk in a gamer chair. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm doing like the shining, like like facial expressions. I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you can't say that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, my relapse is going to be so sick. It's going to, I've been waiting for it for fucking three years. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to make it happen. I keep threatening to do it. Mm hmm. Yeah. I used to spritz alcohol into your nose, thinking that maybe that would be the push that you needed. <laughs> you you did take. used to do that. I, <laughs> it I, was very, I used to do that. It was very rude. What are your replacement vices? Uh, <laughs> pick everything. Just, <laughs> just like food, ice cream, oh, treats. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. sure. Um, I got really into gambling, because I, I, as like a COVID hobby, was like I just got really into sports betting, because I had always wanted to, and I was like, if I do it, I'll get addicted, and then I had nothing to do, and I was like, well, everyone's got to pick up something. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know. I definitely i've I've gotten addicted to gambling before, but it was like very low state. I became for like a week or two. I was like a scratch offs guy, and then I was just like, "Oh my god, what am scratch I doing?" Scratch offs. Yeah. yeah. Wow, dude. It's like the shittiest and most like judged form of gambling. It's very judged. You got a guy literally standing there judging yeah. you. Though I. I was never the guy who would like buy one and scratch it off and like hand it back to the guy. I would always take it home and scratch it off there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just like, I'm going to go to my abode to do this scratch off. Yeah. I might pair it with a lovely dessert wine, a port perhaps. And you just go out the window and you just go out to the window behind the cashier and you're just like against the window just scratching it. <laughs> 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 he just hears yeah. a muffled fuck <laughs> man yeah, I, I have one more I couldn't <laughs> wait to get home and I finished this one <laughs> dude I love gambling but I love the shittiest like least profitable forms of gambling I yeah. love slot machines Oh, oh is, is there anything more fun nothing and lights sounds mm -hmm. I was in Vegas last month and I was just like how do you they used to have a lever. You would pull a lever, and that to me is a very satisfying feeling. The, mm -hmm. the sensation of grabbing and pulling the weight of it. Right. Mm -hmm. But then and, now you just press a screen. And here's why I trust it less. Because with the lever, at least with old style slot machines, there's a lever, there's a mechanical action, you can hear the whirring of the... I believe that maybe there's some chance involved. When it's just a fucking screen and a button, I don't believe that I'm going to no, win. It's so bad. There's it, no way. No. How do you do it? I was like, I was like what if you're doing that? I guess it's just the money involved. Because I was like, what's the point? And why don't you just go play like World of Warcraft or something? Like the, right. there's better video games out there. You can have more fun on a screen 
playing like Fruit Ninja or whatever. Right. Yeah. Like you, I don't know. I that's why sports is the fun one because you get to pretend like you're an expert. You know, <laughs> right? Like you get to be, act real smart. Yeah. I got really bad. You have to be like, maybe I'm a novelist or something, dude. I got so I I know so much about NASCAR now. Mm-hmm. I'm genuinely really well. So it was my that was okay. So go back to when I was a uh, uh, memorizing flags. The next thing after flags that I memorized was was types of cars, right? And then that led to a a, a the only sport I followed as a kid was was NASCAR. NASCAR? Dude, I, <laughs> I my room I had nothing. I my room was covered in Rusty Wallace posters. I love Rusty Dude, Wallace. Dude, Rusty Wallace He's was the, the man. Fun, he, I I haven't followed NASCAR since he drove, but like Rusty Wallace was the fucking man. That guy's awesome. He's yeah. the Miller Light car. Ooh, yes, dude. The beautiful two. <laughs> dude, I would love to be a NASCAR guy, and I I drive. Uh, it's sponsored by like a beer that just haunts me because I can't drink it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to run when they pop the champagne. Yeah, I, I want to drink the Yingling car, and I just like every now and then I catch like my car in the reflection of something, and I like almost crash. Oh, <laughs> dude, there's a guy. So there's a there's a there's a soccer player uh, named Frank Ribery who is a a white man who converted to Islam. Hell yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was playing on the team in Germany, and when his team won the German league, everybody pours big, like, you know, big things of beer on each other. And a teammate of his poured beer on him during the celebration, and he never spoke to him again. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty sick. Just a five six French man who just who also had like a burn scar on his face. Terrifying looking human being. Damn, dude. And he never spoke to that guy because he poured beer on him. Oh, but yeah. Damn. That's a, that's a good. What would I do if people poured beer on me? Love it. You'd be in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, oh my god, I miss this so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do just, miss just it like a grabbing lot. tufts of hair, just like. <laughs> I go through phases where like I feel like I'll go through like a year where I'm like I don't miss drinking at all who gives a shit but then you know then every now and then I'm like damn I miss drinking I'm telling you dude if we poured beer on you you would be nude in 30 seconds sucking it out of your clothes <laughs> I'm telling you I can see it that is really what keeps me from drinking again is the fact that I when I when I used to be a drinking man I loved getting nude and oh dude yeah same I gotta I gotta stop drinking <laughs> I love to be getting naked when I'm shit face. Because it's so funny. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Mm-hmm. I was like, I, I distinctly remember a night in college when it was like, me and my roommate were like, how funny it would it be if we got naked? And so it just turned into a standoff between, there was, we had six guys living in an apartment and three of us got naked. And we were like, why aren't you guys getting naked? <laughs> What are you going to do? Why not? <laughs> we all trust each other. <laughs> What's going on? And it, it is it, so funny when there's like one holdout. Yeah. Well, yeah. no. So, so it was, it was, there were three holdouts and there were three, actually it might've been four too. We might've had a numerical advantage, but there were at least two holdouts <laughs> and they were like, we're not, I'm not getting naked. And no women, right? Of course not. No. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and what ended, no, I believe, I believe what ended up happening. I believe what ended up happening was that four of us got naked Two of us are not naked. And we're like, all right, what do you guys want to do? You want to watch Peep Show? Okay, sure. And we watch. <laughs> like, <laughs> so just a divided room. <laughs> divided room. <laughs> three naked guys. Yeah. And, and I, three I clothes you guys. you were not sharing a couch with the clothed yeah. guys, right? Like, um, I, if I recall correctly, there was a clothed couch. There was a naked couch. Oh, yes, for sure. Uh-huh. And then there was a naked chair as well. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't imagine there would be commingling between the two factions. It was no, no. no. It was very. It was a. It was a civil war. It was a house divided. It was very. Um, <laughs> very north and south in that apartment. Me and my uh, my buddy's senior year of high school, we did that where um, we went to our one um, buddy's uh, his like grandparents' beach house, mm-hmm. and we had all planned uh, just because like the one guy who was like a consistent holdout. Never got naked. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were like, and it was his grandparents' beach house. We're like, all right, so we're all just going to like immediately get nude the second we enter the, the um, house. Yeah. Just to upset right. him. And it upset him so much. For sure. We would go yeah. We would go to my friend's beach house a couple, like a summer. Like, this is like <laughs> worryingly recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, the most recent time was two years ago. And my friends, these are the same friends. They know that if they get me drunk enough, they can just be like, hey, Nate, you want to take your clothes off? You should do it. You take your clothes off. Take your clothes off. And I'm like, shut up. Fine. And so I've done it like two years in a row at this house. 
Mm -hmm. And like his parents are like, they come back, you know, they're, they're not there one night, but they come back the next day. They go back to Philly or whatever. And then like they come back and I didn't know that they they have now they have security cameras at the, at the place now. <laughs> oh fuck! Get caught on like the ring doorbell. Uh, I'm, I'm literally like I'm looking I like a deer, you know, like black and white, <laughs> like just like scrambling like outside, running around <laughs> in the hot tub. Yeah, you get caught on the Bigfoot cam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your eyes are just like headlights in the fucking night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, they caught me, and then I was. Very. They. The thing is that uh, I have such a low bar for the for those people, like the like it, my friends, family, and like my mm-hmm. those friends of mine that like. They're just like, yeah, that's no big deal. It, it's, it's, it's just figure it's just fine. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. I, I, you know, the, time changes a lot of us. You know, that was that was two whole years ago. I'm not fucking. <laughs> Mm-hmm. We're the different now. You're reformed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, in high school, my buddy, my buddy Neil would do. Well, there was once uh, winter specifically. We were out of school for two weeks because there was like, it was like four to five feet of snow or something. We got in Anne Arundel County, and so we were all over at this chick's house because her mom was one of those cool moms where it's like you can drink, fuck. I've got eight bedrooms. Do whatever you want, and so. <laughs> Neil was drinking whiskey, got really drunk, got totally nude. We convinced him to go outside and then like locked the door on him. And then we were like, it's, it would be funny to leave him out there for an hour. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like 14 degree weather. (laughs) And was it funny? I got really sick. (laughs) 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 It wasn't safe at all. (laughs) That's yeah. Uh huh. (laughs) Well, that's, that's an hour. You want to take this in for a landing? Yeah, sure. I think Nate's got a, I think Nate has an obligation. So I have a thing I have to plug. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I did this podcast recently <laughs> that I spent eight hundred dollars on the sound guy for. <laughs> um, it sounds very good. It's called a it closer sounds look. great. It's called the closer look. It's all the episodes are out. It takes about three hours to listen to all of it, or you can break it up into twenty five minute chunks, of which there are eight. Uh, you don't have to know anything about baseball. Um, if you're very, if you're familiar with uh, movies and actors from the 1970s. It probably helps. Uh, <laughs> there might be some, might be some punchlines that, that, that don't land. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's for everybody. Um, and I'm, I'm begging you from the depths of my soul. Just get me to like a thousand. Just please. <laughs> That's all I need. Just a, just Such get a me desperate to a, a pitch. Thousand just total? a thousand total. Just a thousand total. <laughs> Not that hard. Not that hard to get to a thousand. Just get to a thousand. A thousand like plays across the whole thing or per episode? Oh, I mean, I don't want to shoot for the moon here. <laughs> That's why I said total. <laughs> I'll start. I'll, 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 I think, I think we're, we're we gotta be, if, if SoundCloud isn't all the numbers, we gotta be over a thousand now at this point total, which includes seven timers, the lifers. <laughs> right. <laughs> there, some people are putting up stats. Uh, so mm. they, they bring the average down, but I think if we can get to yeah a thousand per would be like, I would get a I would get like a tattoo of, of the podcast to commemorate it if I can get a thousand per. Okay. <laughs> you get all the scripts tattooed all over your body. Like, uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get one of those like like collo- like big paintings of all the guys hanging different celebrities hanging out, and it's gonna be all the characters I voice. And it's gonna be a tattoo on my back of all their faces. They're all going to be hanging out, signing the Declaration of Independence, like that big painting. Dude, you should get the same artist who did all the guys at the improv. Yes, that'd be a good one. Yeah, I have no. I have all of my all of my care. I'll come up with signatures for all of my characters and have them sign my back like the Comedy Store wall. Yes, mm-hmm. That's and every need. time I come up with a new voice, a new character, I just add them to my whole body. Just signatures. <laughs> Are any of those people real? No, no. Yeah. They all live with me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we gotta buy like what? Uh, we gotta buy a building next to the comedy store, make our own wall. Yeah, yeah, just wall of wall of guys who showed up, bought a ten dollar well, PBR, and yeah. didn't do anything there. But we should do no. We should what we should do is we should buy we should erect a wall near the comedy store and just keep a running tout ta- like just keep a running updated list of the Los Angeles sex offender registry. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. It's it's just photograph, copy, face. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! You like that comedy store, bitches? What? 
starting podcast beef with comedy store guys. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. It's good. <laughs> I actually encourage that, honestly. <laughs> yeah, closer look. Come come check me out. I'll fucking fuck you up. What up? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How many listeners you got, Rogan? I got almost a thousand total plays, including the repeats. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. what? <laughs> and you don't even have Spotify employees angry at you personally. No, that's right. They 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 would be if they heard it, but not for any content they reason. They would just be mad that they had to listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> They're just mad that their time's being taken. That's out. right. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Listen to a closer look. Uh, I I feel like uh, your pitch was very uh, confusing and sad. But it was like I'm, the podcast. I'm I'm telling you now. It is it is very good. Uh, Maybe listening Will's to it, Twitter, your Twitter's yeah. hilarious. Will's Twitter's hilarious too. Yeah, so yeah. I have no doubt that it's. A, I'm going to listen to it tonight. Like I'm trying mm-hmm. to learn French while I'm sleeping. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. See if I can absorb it like that. You just wake up and started talking like mobsters. Yeah, that's, that's what like, I want. Don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! All right, check it out. Um, yeah, I was gonna. I was. I was oh. gonna plug the uh, Coward Hour live show July 10th at the Auto Bar 6:30. I'm gonna plug mm-hmm. that until oh, in, that's awesome. in Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, yeah. that sounds beautiful. Yeah, it's gonna be sick. Nice. All see right. you guys.